They have the weapons, they just need the ammo. Um, Brian, I'm not sure if I'm on camera. This is Peter. Um, and I'll be honest, none of you want to see me anyway. I'm not that good looking <laughs> man. But, uh, I mean, the Legos are really pretty awesome, I will say. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's like my that. son. The, that's the a good Zoom. one. We, 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 we share a Zoom um, login, so yeah, so <laughs> nice. we have that going for us. Well, at least it's not a cat. <laughs> well it, you know and if you uh, i don't know what the issue is it's probably on your end as far as what you've got your camera setting um set to but yeah i'm uh, gonna try and see what i can do here yeah um, yep. As, i mean as long as your audio is coming through and we can hear you loud and clear <clears throat> um should be fine what we do try to do is uh we we try to keep ourselves muted until we're ready to speak that way, any background or feed, background noise or feedback is cut down. Understood. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So not a problem. And I'll kind of and I'll I'll do my best to try to explain as we go, um, kind of where we are in the process and and next steps and so on. If you do have a question at any point, though, Peter, please don't hesitate to ask. Sure. Um, questions questions okay. are welcome. More than welcome. <clears throat> Let's give it another. Uh, were we had expecting our other uh, new board member as well? Uh, he may not be able to attend, so I think if we have a quorum, uh, Mr. Chair, we probably should proceed. Okay. Let's give it uh, one more minute to seven oh three, if that's all right. I'm just checking my phone to see if I received any texts from any of the uh, other board members. Okay, let's see. Let's see any, so. <clears throat> I have a, a point of order question, Brian, before we get started. Um, with uh, appeal number 2699, that we'll be reviewing for the request to reconsider. Do we approve the draft written decisions for the appeal? Because how we, we go on, we approve the past meetings, um, approval of draft written decisions for appeals heard last month. Do we still go ahead and do that? Because those that was the snapshot in time of our opinion last month. Oh, you're muted. I think you mean uh, appeal number 2695. Excuse me. Yes, you're correct. Yeah. yeah, I think what we would do is is um, table the approval of that until we dispense of the issue of the request for um, uh, a motion to um, reconsider. Excellent. Yep. So what we'll do is, uh, regardless of the outcome, we will have the approval of the wrap that that step. The approval of the draft written decisions will be after we heal appeal number. Uh, 2695 request to reconsider. Got it. Yes. <clears throat> okay. All right. Well, I guess we might as well get started then. Is everybody all set? Okay. Uh, are we confirmed that we're recording? Yeah, it says we it are. We are recording. We are. Excellent. Thank you, Thank Doreen. You, Doreen. Okay. Well, welcome to the February 10th regular meeting of the Scarborough Zoning Board of Appeals. The meeting will now come to order. This is a public proceeding and unless the board specifically votes to go into executive session, the public has a right to hear everything that is being said and to view all of the exhibits that are presented. Please notify the chairperson, which is myself, if you are unable to hear or see the proceedings. Uh, the board works from a prepared agenda and will take up tonight's items in the following order. Um, after uh, after I describe the process, my opening remarks, we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. We'll go through our roll call, approval of last month's minutes, and we will uh, appeal the route. We will vote on the approval of our draft written decisions for appeal number 2699. Um, on behalf of Patricia and Curtis Deegan, uh, Degon, excuse me. Uh, then we'll go through appeals, appeal number 2695, request to reconsider and then appeal number 2700, special exception. And at the very end of the meeting, we'll have uh, zoning board comments. With each um, 
In each instance of an appeal that is being heard, the burden is upon the applicant to demonstrate compliance with each of the criteria or provisions of the application um, of, the, of the appeal. Excuse me. The board will ask questions as necessary to understand the nature of the appeal as fully as possible. When all testimony has been heard, the chair will close the record and the board will adopt findings of fact for each criterion of the appeal and vote to determine if the applicant has met the burden of proof necessary to meet that criterion. It is important to note that if any of the appeal or special exception criteria has not been met, the board must deny the appeal or application. Uh, in many cases, the appellant or the landowner may have a personal problem, which prompted the request for variance. Please understand that this is not legally relevant to the appeal, no matter how sympathetic the board may be to the applicant's, the appellant's situation. After the board votes on merits of each criterion, a motion may be made to approve the appeal, and if there is a second, discussion will follow. The board will then state conclusions of law based on the findings of fact to support a decision on the motion. In most cases, the board will request that the staff prepare a draft written decision based on the stated findings and conclusions, as well as the audio video and supporting materials in the record for approval at the next meeting. As a general note, um, a general vote will then be taken on the appeal. If the majority of the voting members present vote in the affirmative, the appeal is approved. The majority of the voting members vote in the negative, the appeal is denied. The board's decision stands as of the date as the vote was taken, regardless of the approval of a final written decision. And I'll state uh, for the record tonight, um, Mr. Bork, myself, Ms. Shoup, uh, Mr. Karen, and Mr. Howe are voting members. The five, five folks on the board represent a quorum. And, um, and excuse me, is it Mr. Frelinger? Peter? Uh, it's Freilinger, James. Freilinger, thank you, thank you. Uh, you are an alternate uh, member of the board tonight. You are um, speaking and asking questions and performing all the duties as any other board member here, with the exception that you cannot vote. Uh, you are an uh, alternate uh, member of the board, and should one of uh, the no regular voting members be uh, absent during the meeting, you would take their place as, uh, as uh, a voting member of the board. Understood, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, generally speaking, appeals from adverse decisions must be filed with the Superior Court of State of Maine, uh, except as otherwise provided by law within 45 days of this board's decision. Also, <clears throat> if anyone present at this hearing may wish to preserve your individual right to file any such appeal, you must be certain that this board's record evidences your appearance this evening and the basis for your support or opposition. So if you wish to file something with Superior Court, we need to know that you are physically here or virtually here at this meeting. Uh, again, we remind everyone that this is a public proceeding and you have the right to hear and see what is happening. All persons speaking will be asked to first you state your name and your address or affiliation, and then all board members and interested parties are asked to direct their questions through the chair, which is me. Uh, so at this time, uh, if you all please rise or um, stand with me or, and state the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So, uh, may we go through roll call, please? Okay, um, Mr. Bork? Present. Mr. Karen? Present, excuse me. <laughs> Mr. Howe? I am here. Ms. Shoup? I'm here. Mr. Freilinger? Present. Mr. Oh my gosh. Me? Uh, oh yes, Mr. Hebert. <laughs> I'm here as well. I'm trying to remember Alan's last name and I can't. Foster. Foster. Thank you. Mr. Foster, not here. Excellent, thank you. Okay, with that, do I have, um, we're gonna move on to the approval of the minutes from our last month's meeting, January 13th, 2021. Has everyone had a chance to review um, the minutes and are there any questions, concerns, or corrections that folks on the board would like to make? Okay, I'm seeing a lot of head shakes, so that is uh, negative. Um, seeing none, do I have a motion to approve the minutes from last month? Yes, Mr. Chair, a motion to approve the meetings from uh, January 13th. Excellent, thank you, Mr. Bork. Do I have a second? Motion to second. Okay, that's Mr. Karen, thank you. All those in favor, Mr. Bork? Aye. Mr. Karen? 
Hi. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shu? Yes. I will vote in the affirmative as well. Um, and Mr. Frelinger, um, probably abstain from this vote since you weren't here at the past meeting. Yes, that would be appropriate, I think. Okay, great, thank you. Um, obviously, of course, if you have um, thoroughly read through and watched last month's recording, you can vote to agree or disagree with the minutes as they are presented. Um, right now, what we're gonna do is move to this number five on the agenda. We're gonna skip the approval of appeal number 2695 draft written decisions. We're gonna wait till we discuss that uh, appeal. And we're going to go to appeal number 2699, the Practical Difficulty Variance Appeal by Northeast Civil Solutions on behalf of Patricia and Curtis Dagon. Do I have, um, or there, <clears throat> do I have a motion to approve the draft written decisions of 2699? Yes, Mr. Chair, motion to approve uh, the draft version of uh, appeal number 2699. Great. And do I have a second? A second. Great. Excellent. Uh, any discussion? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Bork, how do you vote? Yes. Excellent, Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. I will vote aye as well, and Mr. Frelinger? Uh, I will vote aye. Excellent, thank you. Okay, now we're gonna go into the appeal. So first off, we're gonna discuss appeal number 2695. This is a request to reconsider the appeal 2695 from last month. It's a practic practical difficulty variance by, excuse me, Perkins Thompson on behalf of Wix Rossiter and Layla Schuler, Nine Pinewood Circle, Assessor's Map U017, Lot 72. Um, <clears throat> At this point, what we are going to do in this process, since this is a motion to reconsider, and we don't get many of these very often, um, what's, what happens is um, the appellant is going to have an opportunity to speak and, in, and make their case as to why we need to reopen this uh, appeal for con reconsideration. We're going to allow them to speak. Um, it can't, they're not allowed to provide the evidence of what is in there to change our minds on it, just the reasons why, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brian, um, the reasons why we need to reopen this for reconsideration. So yes, with, Mr. Chair, that's correct. It's it's just a, uh, the board is being asked if they would recon, if they would make a motion to reconsider um, the appeal. And so uh, at this point, as Mr. As you said, Mr. Chair, we're not taking evidence. We're simply listening to their reasoning why we should reopen it. Um, and I believe that the uh, that Attorney Joe Savisky had provided basically those reasons in a letter to the board, which you should have in your packet. And that's basically what we're looking at right now. We're not um, we're not going to hear any new evidence until the board either decides to make a motion, which they they may decide to do, or they may decide not to make a motion. They may make a motion and it should be seconded. If it doesn't get seconded, then it dies for lack of second. Uh, if it is seconded, then there can be discussion, more discussion. And then uh, if, it's a, if, it's a, if the vote to uh, reconsider is approved, then uh, we can hear more uh, uh, testimony or more evidence from uh, Mr. Rossiter or any of his representatives. So that's how that works. And I would note as well, um, <clears throat> since I believe, Mr. Bork, you were the one who made the motion on this originally last month, you would have to make the motion this time in order, um, the motion to reconsider would have to come from you. I'll pass. Um, okay. So with that being said, um, Mr. Longstaff, um, do we invite in, um, do we invite in Mr. Savisky to explain why we need to uh, hear this for reconsideration? Yes, I think at this point we can elevate Mr. Savisky, we can elevate Mr. Rossiter, but um, whoever's going to speak is going to be the one that's going to give us the reasons why the board should reconsider. Yeah, and we see Mr. Savisky right there. How are you, sir? Hi, good, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, everyone hear me okay? Yes, sir. So, um, point of order before I begin, this is, uh, I think you've made this clear already, but um, you are not uh, at this point, uh, entertaining the additional evidence that we would like to s provide, you're simply making a judgment as to whether you should grant the motion to reconsider. That is correct. Okay. 
Well, I think the, the, the reason simply is that uh, Mr. Rossiter was in attendance at the last meeting, but due to technical uh, difficulties with the Zoom um, virtual meeting platform, uh, he was unable to uh, to speak. I believe you, Mr. Chair, recognized that he wanted to speak and attempted to uh, elevate him to a panelist uh, status, and uh, that didn't happen. And uh, frankly, I think uh, when you have an applicant uh, wishing to speak and provide evidence um, uh, with respect to um, an application concerning his, his property, um, I mean, it raises uh, questions of due process, um, him not being able to speak, uh, being denied the opportunity to, to speak. Um, and I, I would remind the board that um, for a long time, uh, these types of virtual meetings uh, were not allowed under Maine law. It took the uh, pandemic to finally uh, convince the legislature that uh, having public meetings in this type of forum is um, is permissible given the circumstances. So uh, with that in mind, the due process um, um, implications of, of, of Mr. Rossett are not being able to speak and provide relevant evidence as to um, uh, particular in, with respect to uh, the criteria on which the, 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 the appeal was ultimately denied. Um, that would be the reason um, in support of our request for reconsideration not to mention the fact that we only had four um, board members present, which I realized was a quorum, but we have an, an additional voting member of the of the board here tonight. So um, one of the criteria uh, ended up in a 2-2 tie. So for all those reasons, um, we would ask the board to uh, grant our request for reconsideration. Thanks and happy to answer any questions. at this point um, before we don't I don't necessarily want to go into discussion on the topic of it um, the discussion happens if a motion is made uh, to open this for reconsideration so is there I will entertain a motion to um, <clears throat> reopen this for reconsideration is if there is a move on the motion or a second and or a second okay um, I just want to confirm that there's no one is making no one is moving on the no one is making the motion to reopen this for reconsideration. Um, I will I will I will admit that unfortunately due with the the technology that we're forced to cope with during the pandemic that things have been very very difficult here. Um, but one one item I will point out that it was a four to zero. Um, it was a majority vote uh, unanimous that the application did not pass. Um, and there were two points in the application that did not, uh, did not go through. Um, so I guess at this point, uh, if there is no motion for, to be made for reconsideration, Brian, do we move on from this point? So if I may, Mr. Chair, a, a final point and then, and, and then, uh, and then I'll be quiet. So the okay. evidence. Yeah, one final brought, point. <laughs> the evidence that Mr. Rossiter wants to present is directly relates to a criteria on which the board found uh, was not met. And then the other criteria, which was a 2-2, ended in a 2-2 split, we now have an additional board member here that could that could provide the, the deciding vote. So we wouldn't be here wasting the board's time if we didn't think there was uh, a realistic chance that the result could be different this time around. Understood. Thank you, Mr. Savisky. I appreciate that. Um, with that said, uh, I'll ask one last time. Any folks on the board want to reopen this for reconsideration? Mr. Chair, you know, I have no desire to make a motion to open this for reconsideration. I do feel like the applicant does deserve some sort of explanation, and I don't know if we can make comments as to regards to that or if we're simply just going to say no. Well, what we can do is um, if you do make the motion for reconsideration, it is a first and a second, then that goes into discussion. And then we can state the reasons why that we voted the way we did. And then when we go to a vote, you may vote either yay or nay to open it for, to, ha to allow it to pass. We're voting for reconsideration. If the vote for reconsideration passes, then we reopen the application and we go through the findings of fact again. If we reopen the, the motion for reconsideration and we just have a discussion about it, and it's just a motion whether or not to reopen it, and at that point, the board can discuss the reasons why you would vote yes or no. 
Pardon me, uh, Mr. Chair. Yes. Should there be a motion in a second, would this be an appropriate time for uh, the appellant to share the additional information or would that wait until an approved, um, approved to reconsider? It would be at the, their information will be provided after an approved motion to reconsider if that vote passed. If that vote fails, then this stops and we proceed to the next appeal. And I would just, Mr. Chair, if, if I may, I'd just remind the board that even if you if you made the motion, seconded it, and improved it, and the applicant was able to provide his evidence, it, it doesn't automatically mean that that's going to change your minds. It's just hearing hearing what wasn't able to be said at the original meeting. And, and, and honestly, in all fairness, um, I have no vote here. I, I'm, I'm only staff. I, I think given these times and given the technology and given the opportunity, I, I would certainly encourage the board to consider um, just, again, just allowing that due process to happen. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to change your mind. It might change your mind. It might not. But allowing the due process to happen um, is not a bad thing. Uh, I don't know what anybody's reticence is about this and that's not my call I'm only yep. here to um, support you so uh, I just would offer that and, uh, and and again there's about five ways this thing can die and only one way that it can succeed so <laughs> thank you Mr. Long staff. I, I, I will also I will state um, if if we don't proceed further from this point then our findings of fact from last month's application and um, the vote that was taken at that point will stand. Mr. Chairman, Mr. This is, oh, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Frelinger. I'd, I'd make an observation just um, given the nature of the, the, the request by um, Mr. Savisky, which is largely a technical issue, it may be appropriate to have um, a motion um, and a vote on the motion to clarify the board's um, approach to technical difficulties in the future um, and have that on the record. Um, uh, with no comment on the findings of fact or on, on the potential future um, submissions of evidence, it just may be appropriate to have a discussion of that so that we're clarifying for the for future appellants what what they might need to expect in terms of of, uh, of going forward. No, I understand. That's a great suggestion. Thank you, Peter. Um, I would say we can let's have that discussion uh, during the zoning board comments portion of the meeting uh, at the very end. Um, Mr. Bork, were you going to say something? Yes. Uh, Taking into consideration uh, Mr. Longstaff's uh, uh, guidance, uh, I will therefore make a motion to reconsider. Okay, do I have, okay, Mr. Karen seconds. Okay, now we are in the discussion phase. So the motion has been made. Now we are in the discussion phase of the motion. Now we may discuss the reasons why we should reconsider or should not reconsider. Does anyone like to, any comments to start? Mr. Bork. All right. Uh, first, I'll start with saying that um, uh, you know the the vote, uh, which was a tie. Okay, there was warning given pr uh, prior to that vote that a tie would result in a negative outcome, and the uh, the, the person representing uh, Mr. Rosser, you know, his attorney, knew that. He had the opportunity to request that uh, the whole issue be tabled until a future meeting. And we know that's been done in, in past appeals. So the attorney had the opportunity to do that. Uh, I would further uh, state that as the representative of Mr. Rossiter, it was incumbent upon the attorney to be fully aware of all the issues and all the evidence that needed to be presented in the past, we've always said you get one shot, and that's it. And I realize we had technical difficulties involved here, but we had a we had an attorney representing the appellant, and the attorney really should have been prepared to to request it to, to be tabled, and also to you know when it was obvious that Mr. Rossiter could not say what he wanted to say, he should have then again requested it be tabled. He failed to do so. 
Okay, thank you, Mr. Bork. Ms. Shoup? You know, I think Mr. Bork covered a lot of the concerns that I had before. Um, you know, I think it is important for generally moving forward folks to know that, you know, if you have a public comment that you want to make, try to get it ahead of time. You know, you have the, the hand up feature, the chat feature, things like that. I think it's really difficult to try to open it back up when an applicant comes with such great representation. They had a really good application. It was very thorough. I think they did a very good job, you know, presenting their argument. It was just not a winner. And um, I think it's a slippery slope to try to open it back up when maybe a public, I mean, when you, when you do that, I like to try to remind people we are a board of, you know, volunteers and this is our time. And I think we did a really good job the first time around and a quorum is a quorum. And I think they knew that going forward. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments from the board? Um, um, Mr. Um, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Karen. Pardon me. Um, of the two uh, issues raised within the um, request to reconsider, I think Mr. Bork spoke to um, both very well, one of which um, was a um, clear 2-2 and with the information provided at the beginning of the appeal, um, it was made clear that the tie would result in a failure. Um, but the second part, with the additional information that may be heard from Mr. Rosner, I would just uh, make it a point to anyone listening that uh, any information should be included in the initial application and packet. Um, I understand that there are technological issues, um, but just something to keep in mind in the future. Other comments from board members? Mr. Chairman, this is uh, Mr. Freilinger. Um, yes. I, I just observe, you know, obviously there's a technical issue with me being able to appear visually on this meeting. So I'm particularly sensitive to the appellant's um, uh, discussion. But on that point, to Ms. Shoup's point, um, there are a variety of ways to both inform um, counsel ahead of the meeting and to participate as well as you can, even if video is not enabled or, or other issues come about. Um, and I think it's important for the public to know that in a time which is perhaps exceptional, but may become more normal, that um, it's incumbent upon us all to make sure that both the application is as detailed as possible, our representation is as informed and is as capable as possible, and that, that we're ready with backup alternatives, including potentially asking items to be tabled for future consideration if there is an issue. So um, I, I, uh, I, I, I encourage the voting members of the board tonight to consider that as they, as they, um, as they can, um, consider it. Thank you, Mr. Freilinger. Any other comments from the board? Okay, so I'm going to go, we're going to go to a vote, and this is a vote for reopening appeal number 2695 for reconsideration. Mr. Bork, how do you vote? No. Mr. Karen, how do you vote? No. Ms. Shoup, how do you vote? No. Mr. Howe, how do you vote? You s unmute yourself. Say it one more time. Something appears to be working with your uh, with your phone, but that was uh, that was a no, uh, and I will vote no on this as well. Um, so unfortunately, uh, we will not be reopening appeal number two six nine five, Mr. Savisky or Mr. Rossiter. Our apologies and thank you for your time. Thank. You. Okay, Mitt, well, we are going to move on to. <clears throat> uh, that being said, um, we're going to go to the approval of the raft of the draft written decisions for the appeals heard at the January 13, 2021 meeting. That is for appeal number 2695, the practical difficulty that we were just discussing. Um, everyone has had a chance to review the findings of fact that were taken last month into your consideration. And Mr. Bork, um, uh, do we have a motion on the floor to accept the uh, approval of the draft written decisions? Yes, Mr. Hebert. Uh Motion to approve appeal number 2695 as written. Okay, Mr. Karen. Motion to second. Excellent. And all those in favor, Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. And I will vote yes as well. Great. Thank you all. Uh, we're going to move on to our newest appeal tonight, appeal number 2700, special exception appeal, home occupation by Leanne M. Denham. For Leah Lane, Assessor's Map R023, Lot 1006, excuse me. 
And uh, if Doreen and Brian, if one of you would mind uh, bringing in um, Ms. Dennant. Great. While uh, that's happening, I'll just give the board a quick rundown on the, on the proposal. Uh, appeal number 2700 is a special exception appeal. Um, the applicant is proposing to establish a home, bake, ba a home based baking business in her existing dwelling at Four Lea Lane. It is her primary residence. Um, she does not wish or intend to sell any product at the residence, nor does she intend to employ anyone that is not a resident of the dwelling. Um, she has provided plans uh, that show that the area that she's going to use is not uh, is not more than 20% of the home. Um, and, uh, and again, as a home-based business, you'll both, uh, the board will be reviewing section 4I criteria for special exceptions, as well as Section 9V home occupation criteria. Okay, Ms. Denon, can you hear me? I can. Excellent, did I pronounce that correctly? Uh, Denon, yep. Denon, excellent, uh -huh. thank you. Um, well, as we're getting started here, if you want, if you could tell the board about uh, the application that you're submitting and uh, what your goals are here. Uh, for the home, <laughs> for a home-based baking um, business, as you had stated, um, it's really very, um, in the very beginning stages, I'm hoping to be ready to be able to participate in the Scarborough Farmers Market by the summer. Um, so it's really just a startup and um, I, don't have a, I don't have a business plan set. Um, I'm just taking baby steps at this point and I knew that this was the first step that I needed to take in order to accomplish that, so. Excellent, great. Okay. So what I'll do at this point is I'll ask you each of the questions, the standards for, sec for special exceptions, um, A through F, and uh, or excuse me, A through I, and you can just read the answers that you provided in the application uh, directly back to us. This is more so that we have it um, audio recorded for the record in case, uh, in case we were to pull this, pull this meeting recording back up in the future. Okay. So uh, I'll start with letter A. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Um, correct. The home occupation, which is baked goods, will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation as the home occupation is analogous to normal functions of a residential kitchen. Excellent, thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, B, uh, yes, Mr. Bork. Oh, pardon me, Mr. Chair. Uh, of course, um, Mr. Karen. Just a question as we move forward, is now the appropriate time to ask any clarifying question? Yes, yeah, so thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Karen. So, um, Mr. Freilinger, for your information and for all the board members and for our, our appellant as well, at any point between now and when we close the public hearing, we may ask questions of the applicant at any point, but please direct them through me just so that we can help facilitate the conversation. Um, just sort of raise your hand, grab my attention, and uh, I'll, uh, we'll answer those questions at that point. Good question. Thank you, Mr. Karen. Pardon me, Mr. Chair, a follow up. Do you, do you have a question? I do have a question. All right, shoot. All right. Um, would it be possible to get an additional information about if the appellant is on a septic or town? I am on a septic. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Actually, a quick question, if I may, Mr. Yes, Green? Mr. Frylinger, go for it. Um, just uh, um, uh, given the baking, is there a venting process or is there a, an industrial vent or something that will be associated with this or is this literally just... The, the whatever venting or whatever um, uh, uh, ventilation you have for your existing residential kitchen. It, it is the existing ventilation. Got it, thank you. Okay, because you'll be using your uh, home appliances, I'm assuming. Correct. Okay, Mr. Bork. Uh, just for clarification here, this is regulate, regulated by the Department of Agriculture for home baking, and uh, there are no special requirements for venting as long as you're using uh, you know, electric appliances, or if you do have gas, like a gas commercial oven, then that would require venting. But you know, this for normal home appliances, it's not required. It's regulated by Department of Agriculture, not by health department standards, like a restaurant would be, or a commercial kitchen. It's not a commercial kitchen. Excellent. Yeah, no, I, I was just thinking about the volume of delightful aromas coming from the bakery more than anything else. <laughs> 
Let's hope. <laughs> Let's hope. Lots, lots of. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's. We'll go on to letter B. The proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. Okay, so um, that's correct. The home occupation would not create any vehicular or pedestrian traffic concerns as the premises is only used for baking and would not be used for retail sales. All right, excellent. Pardon me? Just, yes, please. Um, just to confirm, uh, there's no intended employees beyond yourself? Correct. Thanks. Letter C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which will be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree in municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Right. So the proposed use would not create public safety concerns as the premises would only be uh, would only use residential kitchen appliances. Um, as there would be no retail space, there would be no additional pedestrian or vehicular traffic. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Denon. Uh, D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. Right. So the home occupation will be conducted in the kitchen within the residence and does not involve any activity that would cause sedimentation, erosion, or leaching into the ground or surface water supplies. The residence has a functioning septic system that will easily handle any wastewater created by the baking and kitchen cleanup processes. Excellent, thank you. Letter E, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. So the proposed use will be contained within the existing residential space and would not have any impact on physical size visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Excellent. Okay. Letter F. If located in a shoreland zone as depicted on the Town of Scarborough official shoreland zoning map, the proposed use will comply with all the requirements of the Town of Scarborough shoreland zoning ordinance. Are you in a shoreland zone? We are not. Excellent. That's an easy one. Letter G, the applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Uh, correct. So as the, um, as the owner of the property, I would have that uh, ability to carry out the proposed use. Okay. Excellent. Letter G, the applicant has the... Actually, Mr. Chairman, just, just to be clear, there of are course. no restrictive covenants on the deed or there's no restrictions on... On, on that, and I, I note on on the next item that you have a sixty percent equity interest. There's no restrictions from other any, any other equity holders. Correct. Okay, just wanted to confirm. Thank you. Yeah. No, good questions. Uh, one point on that uh, question. Yes. We don't we don't rule on those kinds of issues. We just simply look at something. You know that that something's wholly separate. Appreciate that, Mr. Bork. Thank you very much. And, and this is my first meeting. I'll note. Um, to no, be home, so thank it, you. So it's it, believe me, it's a learning process. I've been doing this for many years now, and it's uh yeah. <laughs> welcome on board, by the way. And questions and questions are welcome, Mr. Frelinger. So thank you for sending them over. Keep them coming. Um, sorry, let me adjust this here. All right, so that was letter H. Now we're going on to letter I. I believe this is the last oh, one. Yes, Mr. Chair. Yes, um, Mr. Karen. Meeting uh, number or letter H. Oh, we did. Sorry, yes, because we were asking questions about G. Thank you. The applicant has letter H. <clears throat> the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the board of board of appeals pursuant to subsection five of this section. So the applicant, that's myself, has 60% equity in the property with an available cash reserve uh, in excess of $30,000 and is technically and financially able to comply with any reasonable conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals. Excellent. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Letter I, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in their neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. So the home occupation will be conducted within the residence and will not generate abnormal or excessive noise by the nature of the home occupation. <clears throat> Pardon Excellent. me, Mr. Chair, could I ask a question? Of course. Um, just to check about the hours of operation, would you mind giving additional information on when those might be? Um, during, the, during the day, I mean, typical nine to five, maybe 
um, in the evening, but it's in my own kitchen. So it, it wouldn't have any impact on um, anyone in the neighborhood. All right, thank you. Yeah. Excellent. Are there any other questions from the board at this time? Again, if you think of something, um, just just let me know. Uh, we can ask the appellant uh, questions all the way up until we close the public hearing. Mr. Longstaff, have we received any emails, phone calls, or letters from uh, the public or neighbors with regard to this? Mr. Chair, we have received nary a one email or public comment, written comment, so. Okay, excellent. Now, would this be a good time for us to transition over to the performance standards for home occupation, or do we need to um, go through and vote through each one of the questions first? I think we should go to the home occupation next. Sure. Okay. So we're going to ask you the home occupation questions. That's in section nine, part five, the performance standards, home occupations, Ms. Lennon. And so I'll just answer, ask you the questions which you provided answers for in the back of your packet. Thank you for that. Um, so it's going to be one through 12 and a few of these we could probably skip. Uh, so number one, the occupation or profession shall be carried on wholly within the principal building or build or within a building accessory thereto. Um, that is correct, and I'm just I'm I apologize. I'm looking for the for the answers that I submitted to you, and I'm not sure that I printed that off as part of my own packet. I can uh, I can actually, if you if you want, Mr. Chair, I can bring up the application on the screen so that Ms. Ms. Dunning can see her answers. <laughs> Let's do that, please. Okay. Thank you. That'll work. Most of these questions are pretty straightforward anyway. So number two, yeah, yeah. Um, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the dwelling unit for residential purposes. Um, are we, I'm sorry, are we looking at number? We're looking at number two. So the, the home occupation shall be clearly incidental and secondary to use the building. So if this is your home, this is still your primary residence and the purpose of this residence isn't to operate a bakery. Is that correct? Correct. Excellent. Uh, number three, no more than one person who is not a resident of the dwelling shall be employed in the home occupation. So do you intend on having employees work for you? I do not intend to have employees work for me. Okay. Number four, exterior signage may be permitted in accordance with the home occupation sign provisions under section 12, uh, sign regulations, subsection E. So this basically just um, lets you know that you are um, within your right, assuming that this application will pass, you can put out a sign at the end of your driveway uh, within certain dimensions that you can work with Brian on to establish. Okay, great. Yeah, so there's no intention to have um, exterior signage because there's no retail space. Excellent. Uh, number five, there shall be no exterior display, no exterior storage of materials, and no other exterior indication of the home occupation or variation from the residential character of the principal building, except as expressly permitted by the district regulations of this ordinance. This prohibition shall not apply to the storage of lobster traps. Right, so baking materials will be stored in sealed containers within the operating area of the property. Therefore, there's no exterior storage of materials and no exterior indication of the home occupation. Excellent. Sounds like no one's even going to know that it's happening. No. <laughs> Number seven, the traffic generated, <clears throat> excuse me, by such home occupation shall not increase the volume of traffic so as to create a traffic hazard or disturb the residential character of the immediate neighborhood. Right. So home occupation would not include retail space and therefore will not increase vehicular or pedestrian traffic to the residential neighborhood. Excellent. A, a, a quick question, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes, yes, Mr. Freilinger. Just out of curiosity, so will you be delivering these yourselves? Or you, you mentioned the, the, the Scarborough market. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have a truck coming up and taking deliveries of, of baked goods or anything like that, I take it? No. Okay. Right. All right. Uh, we are on number eight. I believe. Um, in addition to the off-street parking provided to meet the normal requirements of the dwelling, adequate off-street parking shall be provided for vehicles of each employee and the vehicles of the maximum number of users or customers the home occupation may attract during peak operating hours. 
right? So there will be no additional employees or retail space. Uh, therefore, there will not be any need for um, off-street parking. Excellent, thank you. Uh, nine, the home occupation may utilize <clears throat> A, not more than 20% of the dwelling floor, unit floor area provided uh, that for the purpose of this calculation, unfinished basement and attic spaces are not included. Um, it may utilize unfinished attics, attic and uh, basement spaces and space within an accessory building totally not more than 1,000 square feet of the floor area. And I believe you included a diagram explaining this. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So looking at the uh, building layout, you are proposing a, sp uh, pay a space area equaling to 13% of the total square footage available, which is under, which is well under the 20% uh, maximum limit that you're able to have. Does uh, folks on the board concur with that statement? Excellent, thank you, Mr. Bork. Um, Let's see, let's go to number 10. Home occupations may include retail sales subject to the following limitations. A total area devoted to retail sales is limited to 400 square feet and may and must be fully enclosed within a building. The sale of products is limited to products and articles produced, assembled, on, assembled or processed on the premises. And then it goes to describe seafood, but we're not dealing with seafood here. Right, so the, um, there will be no retail sales. Um, and um, so products to be limited to baked goods. Yeah, just baked goods produced and packaged on the premises. Excellent. You're not selling lobsters out of here. No. <laughs> unknowingly. <laughs> no. <laughs> and uh, that sort of segues into our uh, point number 11, which I uh, believe is not applicable. Efficient, you are not a fisherman or a lobsterman or a shellfish harvester. I am not. And you are not performing motor vehicle repairs or motor vehicle towing businesses at this home? Nope, I will not. <laughs> Excellent. Um, Mr. Longstaff, um, at this point, do we just take a, uh, a straight vote from the board uh, on whether all of the criteria for the home occupation are met? As we've done in past practice, uh, the board seems to have a, 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 a it seems to be okay with doing it that way. I, I feel that's adequate. If, if there were any problems with any of those criteria, you would have already raised them. So I yep. think it, uh, taking them as a whole is, is good. And then you can go back on uh, each of the special exception criteria. Excellent. And, and for Mr. Freilinger and for Ms. Denon's benefit, the reason why we seem to be very detailed about these specific questions, even though they may not necessarily pertain to your application, is just so that um, a lot of the applications uh, aren't as, uh, very, aren't as straightforward and well, and well put together as the one you brought before us. And a lot of times there are a lot of um, unanswered questions and questions about the occupation itself that draws attention to certain points of the application that we have to poke a little bit deeper into. Um, but it doesn't appear to be any of those here. So that is why we try to be a little bit um, slow moving with the details. So thank you for bearing with us here. I guess at this time, I'll, I'll take a motion on the floor uh, to approve the home occupation requirements. Mr. Chair, I, did we do the public I don't think we've closed it and opened it to the public yet. Um, uh, yes, no, thank you. I did, I did miss that portion, I, even though I did ask Brian about the, um, um, the letters and that. So pausing for one moment and taking a step back, uh, Brian, you did mention that we did not receive any phone calls or letters or folks calling in from the public about this. And you're muted. Yeah, I was just checking to see if there was any anybody from the public attending. Um, no, I, I received no public comments. I received no emails. I've received no no letters um, or phone calls for that matter. Okay. And it appears that there are no attendees outside of Ms. Denon who are here in attendance who would like to speak. Unless someone's watching the YouTube channel, you have the next few seconds to hop in here. Otherwise, we're going to move on. <clears throat> Okay, seeing no, further, and seeing no folks in here, we will close the public hearing. Thanks for reminding me, Ms. Shoup. So at this point, I will entertain a motion to approve the criteria for the home occupation. Uh, Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the criteria, all the criteria for the home occupation section. Excellent, do I have a second? I second. That was Mr. Karen. All right, all those in favor, Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Karen? Yes. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. And I will vote yay as well. 
Excellent. So that takes care of the whole occupation. Now we're going to go back to the uh, special exception criteria, and we're going to discuss uh, together as a board. Um, thank you for your time, Ms. Denon. If we have any questions for you, we will let you know. But at this point, the conversation going forward now will just be amongst the board itself. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. Um, so let's go to letter A. The proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air or water, or other aspects of its design or operation. Um, and I'm going to go through this list alphabetically, forwards and backwards. So if you have a comment, please state it. Um, and for your benefit, Mr. Frelinger, uh, we, at this point, we state findings of fact or um, other comments you wish to make about the application. Um, and uh, I'll call on you last just so you can get a flavor for what other folks are uh, going to be answering for the questions here. So I'll start with you, Mr. Bork. Uh, I think the applicant has uh, shown that uh, uh, th there's really uh, no uh, negative impact on the environment. Uh, this, this particular home occupation, uh, home baking business is very common and uh, doesn't really pose any significant uh, issues at all. Uh, so I, I think this is very clear cut. Excellent. Mr. Karen? <clears throat> I agree. Um, as was stated, there's no concerns with regard to additional ventilation or emissions, and the residence is on its own septic, so no concerns about additional sewage disposal, and all the uh, equipment is going to be typical residential appliances. Okay. After Mr. Karen, we have Mr. Howe. Well, it looks like a good packet. I mean, covered all the bases. Okay, awesome. Ms. Shoot? Yes, I agree. The applicant did a very good job putting the application together, and I think the board did a good job addressing all facts. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Frelinger, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I, I, it, it's good to know that this is what a good applicant packet looks like. So uh, I, I appreciate the context from the board members. Thank you. All right, excellent. All those in favor of letter A criteria being met? Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. And I vote aye as well. Letter B, the proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to existing and foreseeable traffic in the vicinity. Mr. Bork? Uh, there is no one impact whatsoever. Uh, this is strictly a home baking business and the products are not sold there. It's not a retail business at all. Uh, the, they're all trends, you know, tr um, they're brought to a, another location where they're to be sold by the by this person, you know, by the uh, applicant. Uh, so there's there's no additional vehicular traffic, uh, you know, due to this business. Excellent, Mr. Karen. Read as the appellant and Mr. Brooks said that uh, there won't be any retail sales here, so no additional traffic there, and there won't be any um, employees or additional vehicles on that regard as well. Excellent. Mr. Howe. Nothing to add. They covered it. Ms. Shoup? I agree with the board. She's only going to be making the product there, and that's it. Okay. Do you have any additional question or comments you wish to add, Mr. Freilinger? I, the applicant uh, uh, indicated that there would no be not be delivery or pickup vehicles, and I think she responded well, so all good. Excellent, thank you. So going through all those in favor of letter B criteria being met, Mr. Bork? Yes. Excellent, Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. And I will vote aye as well. Moving on to letter C, the proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Mr. Bork. Uh, this would have no impact whatsoever on uh, either fire population. Mr. Karen. Agreed. Based upon the occupation, it would be typical of a typical residence and no additional fire or police protection would be required. Mr. Howe? Agree with the board members. Excellent. And Ms. Shoup? I agree with the board. Okay. Mr. Frelinger? Agreed. Excellent. Yeah, the, uh, the big, we're on letter C here. Yeah, the big goods are going to utilize existing kitchen appliances. There's no need for any special industrial equipment. 
um, nor a municipal fire or police protection outside what would normally be covered in a residential home. Uh, so going down the list, uh, Mr. Bork, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. And I'll vote aye as well. And if I can ask a favor of everyone, if you're not speaking, could you make sure your uh, mic is on mute to so you can avoid some of the background noise from uh, feedback and such. Great, thank you. Uh, letter D, the proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect on water supplies. We're gonna start with the shoot. Hard there. Yep, she's not gonna be making any physical changes to the property and what she's doing is just happening within the confines. Excellent. Mr. Howe? Uh, I think the description of, of how she's going to conduct this was pretty straightforward. Excellent. Mr. Karen? Agreed. Uh, being all contained within the residence, there aren't any concerns about um, site drainage, exterior impacts on the uh, adjacent property uh, or water supplies. Excellent. And Mr. Bork? No further comment. Excellent. Mr. Freilinger? Agreed. No further comment. Excellent. Yeah, so she's. It, these are all normal um, ingredients and uh, uh, items that would be disposed of down a normal house drain anyways. Um, we're not talking about any, you know, dumping nail polish or anything toxic into uh, the local or into the leach field or anything like that. So going through votes on letter D criteria, Mr. Bork, how do you vote? Yes. Okay, Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. And I will vote aye as well. So letter E, the proposed use, <clears throat> the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to other structures, and density of development. Uh, Mr. Bork? Because everything's inside, it will have no impact on the neighborhood whatsoever. Mr. Karen? Agreed, nothing to add. Okay, Mr. Howe? I would say the only concern is that she might uh, have some neighbors that want to come over and try out some of the nice baked goods when they, uh, when they smell her cooking. Wouldn't that be sweet? Get it. Ms. Shoup? Yeah, I mean, what she's doing again is completely within the confines of the property. Everyone's going to be completely unaware of what's going on in there. That's going to have zero impact on the neighborhood. Excellent. As the applicant has uh, stated repeatedly, uh, there are not going to be any customers coming to uh, the driveway. Uh, it is within their right to have a sign, but they've indicated they don't necessarily want a sign because there is no retail or display um, to be seen at the um, at her home. Mr. Freilinger, is there anything you'd like to add? No, I concur with the, uh, the other board members. All right, excellent. Going to go vote on letter E then, Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. And I will vote aye as well. Uh, letter F, is this property located in the shoreland zone, Mr. Bork? Yes. Um, well, the, if- <laughs> the, the applicant has shown that it's it meets this criteria, but it's not located in the shoreline zone. There we go. Mr. Mr. Chair. Confirmed by Mr. Long's staff, I take it? Yeah. Yeah. Let me just jump in and say, yes, I can verify that it's not in the shoreline zone. Thank you. Apologize. Getting ahead of myself here. Um, I'll say, Mr. Karen, do you have anything to add? No. Mr. Howe? Nothing. Ms. Shoup? No. Mr. Freilinger? No. All right, I do not either. So we're gonna go through and vote on this one. Letter E, uh, letter F, excuse me, Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. And I will vote aye as well. Let's go on to letter G. The applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site of the proposed use to be able to carry out the proposed use. Mr. Bork? Yes, the applicant has proven that. Uh, Mr. Karen? Agreed. Um, nothing further, Ed. Mr. Howe? Agreed. Ms. Shoup? Yes, and the applicant included within her packet the tax card showing ownership. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Frylinger? Nothing, Ed. 
Excellent. Yep. As Miss Shu pointed out, there's a copy of the assessor's record showing that he and uh, Mr. Troy Denon are co-owners of the property. Uh, going on to letter H, the applicant has the technical and oh, excuse me, we need to vote on this, Mr. Vo uh, Mr. Bork. Yes. Mr. Karen. Aye. Mr. Howe. Yes. Ms. Shu. Yes. And I vote aye as well. Uh, letter H, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and to comply with any conditions imposed by the Board of Appeals pursuant to subsection 5 of this section. Mr. Bork. Uh, as stated by the applicant with 60% uh, equity and cash reserves of $30,000, I think that's certainly uh, sufficient to cover whatever we may require. Excellent, Mr. Karen. Agreed. And uh, the typical use of residential uh, appliances um, proves uh, beyond technical ability. Mr. Howe? Uh, nothing to add. It's covered. Ms. Shoup? Um, I agree that she has met this qualification she has presented tonight and said that she has 60% equity in the cash. Yep. Excellent. Mr. Fryinger, anything to add? No, we're good. All right. Excellent. And I don't have anything to add either. Um, they've stated that they have the financial and technical capabilities to do that. It doesn't appear that we're going to be imposing any conditions by the board, but we'll wait until the very end. Uh, all those in favor, Mr. Bork? Yes. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? And I vote I as well. Letter I, the proposed use and the last criteria of the application, the proposed use will be compatible with existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the generation of noise and hours of operation. Mr. Bork. Uh, as the applicant has stated, uh, normal nine to five hours occasionally evening, but again, this is not gonna really have any impact on noise in the neighborhood. Uh, so I think the applicant is, uh, has given us sufficient uh, evidence that uh, this has been met. So, Mr. Karen? Agreed. And as the board uh, previously mentioned, this will be within the confines of the residence and typical to normal uses. So no uh, impacts to the neighborhood. Mr. Howe? It's all inside. Just the, uh, my smells outside. And that's okay. Ms. Shoup? I think baking is a very compatible use with other people in the neighborhood. <laughs> Mr. Frylinger, anything to add? No, I'd reiterate uh, Ms. Shoup's comments. Um, I think it makes perfect sense. Excellent. And before I go to a vote, I'll just point out that even though this does seem a bit of a silly question when we're involving this particular home, applica home application or home occupation, excuse me, there have been other occupations in the past where someone may want to do a woodworking shop running out of their garage. And if there's a neighbor really nearby, they may not want to hear a belt sander or a planer going at 10 o'clock at night. Um, needless to say, I don't think we have to worry about hours of operation here. So Mr. Bork, how do you vote? Yes. Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. And I'll vote aye as well. Do I have a motion on the floor to uh, approve appeal number 2700? Yes, Mr. Chair, I make a motion uh, to approve appeal number 2700. Do I have a second? A motion to second. Excellent. Uh, all those in favor, Mr. Bo uh, any further discussion? Okay, seeing none, Mr. Bork, how do you vote? Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Karen? Aye. Mr. Howe? Yes. Ms. Shoup? Yes. And I will vote aye as well. So appeal number 2700 passes. Congratulations, Ms. Denon, and good luck. Uh, I guess that takes care of it for appeals tonight. We're going to move on to zoning board comments. And I guess one comment, uh, and that was brought up earlier, and uh, <clears throat> thank you for bringing that up, um, Mr. Frelinger, about, um, I believe it's Mr. Frelinger, uh, with regard to public access uh, during the Zoom call meetings. Um, I guess I'll, we'll just have a, I mean, an open discussion about it. I'll start, I guess, is this, is it possible, um, Brian, or, or from from the town standpoint, to add a, add a caveat in the application or just a supplemental note for each applicant to, to realize that, you know, we are utilizing Zoom as a primary method to facilitate the application process. There may be technical difficulties so that reinforce, we should reinforce that it is um, 
it is critical and crucial for the applicant to include every bit of information that they wish to state in their written physical application. Is there some like an actual, an, an additional note or a modification to the website that just states that uh, just for coverage by the town, just so folks have, um, have, it reinforces that everybody needs to put everything into their application. Uh, yes, Mr. Chair, I believe I could probably add a note to the website on the page with the uh, zoning board information. 90% um, of the applications that we get are, they're, they're people that contact me first anyway, and we have a discussion about that. So I will try to reinforce that with them verbally as well. And usually I, we exchange emails because I'm, I'm sending them information or whatever. So I'll make sure that I take every opportunity to reinforce that as well as put a note on the website. I think that's probably the best that we can do. Mm -hmm. um, I can also add that in the staff comments. Um, to give them at least the opportunity to um, be prepared if, if there are things that I feel, you, you know, in the case of, of the appeal tonight, um, I have no idea what information uh, the applicant was going to provide or wished to provide to us. Um, I think the board's comments were spot on in that, yeah, you should take every opportunity to make sure um, everybody has that information and you're not keeping something in your and you're, you know, close to the vest that you, you didn't get out there in that, that event. So good point. And we'll certainly make sure that we try to reinforce that going forward for as long as we're using this, this uh, uh, virtual platform. Ms. Shoup. I know when we had switched to virtual meetings, Brian had given me a different checklist to go through at the beginning of the meeting. And one of the things was to point out different ways that people could at the beginning of the meeting attend comment and i i think i honestly stopped doing it because i thought it was pretty straightforward you know go to the town website if you want to attend click this link if you want to do that maybe we should start reminding people they have a hand the chat um, at the beginning of the meeting and then I mean, I don't, I don't think we need to go so far as to say if you feel like you don't have the, you know, you can table your application. I don't think we need to go that far, but I think maybe just reiterating at the beginning of the meeting, maybe the different avenues to contact. I mean, doesn't the, doesn't the agenda have a phone number on it too? I mean, it's, I feel like there's a lot of ways to get in. I agree. And, and thank you for mentioning that, Karen. Um, that is an excellent point because there is a phone number that you can dial to dial into this number. Um, and I will, I, will make an, I will make it a point to mention that note in the future, and I'll make sure I have that number available and stated at the beginning of each call, or we can even paste it in the chat as well. Um, I think that, and then in combination with just adding an extra sentence or two on the website, just reinforcing that, you know, if technical difficulties do occur, um, the board will do the best they can to accommodate, but we still have an agenda to go through um, and we, we, can't, we can't necessarily delay with respect to other folks on the agenda that evening. Mr. Chair, I'd, I'd also take the opportunity to just mention to the board that there, um, are, there are opportunities when I review an application, you don't even sometimes see the application that you've, uh, the, the application that you receive in your packets is not the application that I received. There's oftentimes a lot of requests for additional information that I, you know, in looking at, and it continues to frustrate me. And I don't want to, I don't want to beat the um, um, applicants and their and their um, professional help um, to, to death. But you know, we cont I continue to see the same deficiencies in application after application, and I'm continually contacting the applicant and or their representatives, their engineering firms, or whoever they're hiring you know it's this stuff it should be it should be like that because it's the same people it's the same firms and I continue to see deficiencies in the application so you know I do try to get that out there unfortunately sometimes the workload gets in the way and I'm not able to identify all that stuff right up right up front so you know as I think one of the board members already said tonight you get one shot at this um, maybe you're lucky and you get a second shot at this before the hearing but you know, you really got to, uh, just a word out there to the applicants, if you're using professionals to help you put your application together, you know, make sure that the information's there because it, it oftentimes isn't. And it's very frustrating for me to, to, to give you folks 
an application that's missing information. Absolutely. No, I, we certainly appreciate everything that the town does to put all these packets together every single month after month. Mr. Bork? I just like to make a comment. Uh, this is the third uh, municipal zoning board that I've been a member of. And I can attest to the fact that uh, Mr. Longstaff does an exemplary job working with applicants compared to other uh, code enforcement officers that I've worked with in the past. I can tell you that the, peop the people who come before us are so much better prepared than what I've seen elsewhere in other municipalities. Uh, we're very fortunate to have Mr. Longstaff with us and he does a great job. So if somebody comes unprepared, it's their own fault. Any other comments, Mr. Howe? Um, if we are having technical difficulties, and I mean, I, I wasn't a part of the meeting, and I apologize for that, the last meeting. If that were to happen in the future, and I mean, it, obviously it could happen. Tonight, my camera didn't come on, and then Peter's camera wasn't on for a long time. And then all of a sudden, my, my browser rebooted here, and I'm, my camera was up. I didn't mm -hmm. have an option to turn, to turn it on. Yep. I thought I had a completely new interface with Zoom. My, my, my point is, if, if there are technical difficulties, could we as a board encourage or suggest, recommend that they table? We, uh, we, or, 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 or is that something that they have to request on their own? That's not something that we can... We can, I mean, we can always... Uh, the role of our board and Mr. Freilinger for your benefit as well, we are not, um, we're not here to put together their application for them. You know, we sure. can't, we can't say you put this garage here, you really should have put it over here and you'd have a better time of it. That's up for the applicant to work out with Mr. Longstaff and planning and town of Scarborough staff prior before they submit their application and come before us. Yeah. Um, with regard to the technical uh, difficulties though, you know, it's, it's really tough. You know, we're in a real, we're in a real weird state right now for going on a year. And I think the best that we can do is just add the caveat on the website saying that you may experience technical difficulties. Please go to the, um, the town of Scarborough YouTube page with a live video that'll have the telephone number that you can dial in. Cause Fortunately, telephones still do work. If those don't, then we really have problems. But, and I'll state that at the beginning of each meeting as well, where a lot of applicants, they don't have the ability to speak or be seen, but they can still hear most of the time. Uh, more often than not, the issue isn't with the audio quality coming from the meeting to the folks who are the attendees. It's just trying to participate. So I'll be, I'll, I'll be better about my own due diligence about stating other me means and methods for folks to dial into the meeting and provide that phone call. Because worst case, Chip, if you weren't, if you had some computer difficulties and technical issues with that, you could always call in on your cell phone and utilize a speakerphone that way and just follow along <laughs> with the application where it's, it's pretty straightforward in that regard. Mr. Chair, and, and just one. Uh, go, go ahead, Chip. I just, how much? Any idea how much longer we're going to keep going this way? Foreseeable future. Till everybody gets a vaccine, man. Oh, good lord. <laughs> Who knows? Well, I, for the time, we don't have a time frame on this. Um, really, until cases okay. start to go down, I would imagine this is for the foreseeable future, at least for the remainder of uh, this through the summer, anyways. If would be my guess. Okay. Mr. Uh, Mr. Longstaff, you want yeah, to say just, something? I, just to address Mr. Howe's comment too, I think I think it would be case specific if if everything kind of went down and and the applicant and or their representative lost all ability to communicate and present the case. Then obviously, I think we would we would seek to table it. I, I don't think <laughs> we'd take a vote on something that we couldn't weigh in on. So. Definitely. And in this case, um, both professional representatives, the engineer and the attorney for the applicant were present and delivered a very thorough presentation on the submitted material, uh, all of the submitted material um, multiple times, actually, because they had submitted it previously as well. Um, so this is this particular application. We're on 2700 that we approved tonight. This is 2695. So there have been five applications previous uh, to this one that we have gone through. So they have had um, a few opportunities to present all of their information in its entirety to the board. And again, as it was stated, you 
really should have just one shot at this. Uh, other comments? I'll Mr. have one. And, and, yeah. and, and, and Mr. Chairman, it kind of feeds off that last one. When you have professional representation in particular, um, on, on Appeal 2700, it was an individual coming f- before the board on her own. Um, had she had significant technical difficulties, I think we would have been naturally um, uh, 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 not necessarily sympathetic, but we would have understood that she was standing alone without backup. Um, when you come in with an attorney and with an engineering firm, and I, I've, I went back and made sure I was boned up on this one on the uh, on, on the previous things. If if your representation has not been fully briefed on the reasons you're coming to the table with, then that's really your fault. It's not really anything that's that's incumbent upon this board to make up for you or, or to give you a pass on. And, um, and yeah, I, I, and, and, and Mr. Longstaff, uh, maybe when you deal with those represent, representatives, you can remind them of that. And, and that would be offline. It wouldn't necessarily be on the, on that, but representatives who are professionals who are very well-paid attorneys, very well-paid engineering firms should be expected and held to a standard of professional excellence that, that that would that that w- would l- allow us to to be expedited in our in our consideration of their of their appeals. All right, excellent comment, Mr. Frelia. Thank you. Anybody else, Mr. Chair? I just want to bring up one last thing, and then I'll I'll be quiet. Uh, I just. Uh, Two things. Wanted to welcome Mr. Freilinger again, and also uh, Alan Foster, who wasn't here tonight. Um, I had a wonderful conversation with them. I think they'll be excellent uh, additions to the board. I also wanted to mention that uh, again. I think Doreen had sent out emails to everyone to let them know that Maine Municipal Association will be hosting a virtual training for new board members on February 24th from 4 to 7:30 p.m. Unfortunately, it will be virtual, Mr. Howe. <laughs> it's not an in-person meeting, so. Uh, but you can register. We can register you th- for that. There is a cost. The town will pay that cost for our board members. So um, if you have any interest, I know a few of you have already taken advantage of that and, and gotten signed up. Uh, but if any of the uh, others of you want a refresher or want to attend that, just mm-hmm. let Doreen or I know and we'll make sure that you get registered for that. And mm-hmm. that's all I have. No, thank you. Yeah, these those are really valuable. I know I've, I've most of us, if not all of us, have, have participated in at least one of those. And it basically just kind of goes through all the basics. This is an appeal. Here are the different types of appeals. Here are the different types of boards. The due process that goes forward and is pretty standard between all the boards as well. So very valuable. Uh, Mr. Bork? Yeah, I just want to make a follow-up comment uh, on Mr. Long, what my, Mr. Longstaff said about signing up for this. It's probably best to do it through Doreen. You know, she can she can sign you up because there is a fee associated with this, which they pay directly to the main municipal board. Uh, otherwise, if you sign up yourself, then you have to get reimbursed by the town. So it's a lot yeah. easier to just do it through Doreen. Yep. Yep. Email Doreen and Brian, and they'll they should you know with the whichever uh, workshop you'd like to attend, and they'll they'll be able to handle that for you. Uh, anything else that uh, we want to talk about? I just, Mr. Chairman, I just want to um, thank you again, everyone. You've been really welcoming tonight, um, especially as a new board member. I really appreciate that. Um, just to let you know, I'm also a member of the Long Range Planning Committee, so um, that, that I think is a, a helpful overlap. Um, and I'll bring the experiences on this committee to bear in the long range discussions we have on the the, the Ford uh, growth plans for the town. Um, and I'll bring um, the, the 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 Long Range Planning Commission's. Um, uh, uh, insights to this committee as well. And I really appreciate the chance to serve with you, you folks. Awesome. You. Well, it's a pleasure to have you with us, Mr. Frying. I really appreciate it. Mr. Howe? I just wanted to know where the uh, Northern Lights came from in Rudy's background there. Where, where, where is, where's that trick coming from? It's not a trick. If you go out to um, Central Scarborough uh, by Cabela's near the development <laughs> where Rudy lives, they're going on right now. Is there a motion to adjourn? <laughs> Mr. Bork? Mr. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to adjourn. Excellent. Do I have a second, Mr. Karen? Second. A second. Excellent. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, that seems aye. to be a unanimous aye. Thank you all for joining us. Have a great night. <laughs> Thank you, you too. Cheers. <laughs>